Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you for coming out this morning. It's uh, it's been a wet weekend, and I don't know, some people think they're made of sugar and they're going to dissolve and uh, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you uh, as we celebrate as we celebrate the feast day of the Holy Trinity. So let's be uh, in our worship. Do we have any announcements, Brenda? No, Brenda. Uh, let's uh, begin our worship with our opening hymn, number one. Glory to God in 
and children. Your majesty is praise hands. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, what is man that you should be mindful of him? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. All sheep and oxen, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. O Lord our Governor, our salvation. Let us pray together. 
Blessed are you who create us by having the earth. Under the immensity of the universe, you are mindful of us and seek us out. Blessed are you for the gift of his Son, who humbled himself to share our family, that we might be raised from him to glory and splendor. Blessed be your holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. A reading from the letters of Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. I speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I like that phrase in Paul's letter this morning about uh, suffering producing endurance and endurance producing character and because we have character we have hope and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into us uh, through Jesus Christ and through the work of the Holy Spirit. We're celebrating an idea today, a doctrine. And I used to use all kinds of analogies to try to explain the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, which we celebrate today. I talked about shamrocks, and I talked about equilateral triangles, and I, I spoke about, oh, um, water and ice and steam being the same stuff, substance, but different. Uh, yeah. None of that gives us hope to understand, to try to uh, analyze and pin down uh, God's divinity, which is what we celebrate today. Maybe not celebrate, but we bow before. We bow before God's divinity today and acknowledge that his divinity and, and his presence and his creation is beyond our comprehension. 
We like to analyze things. We're products of the Industrial Revolution. So we have a scientific mindset sometimes which wants to reduce everything to its basic components. And you can't do that with God. God is in nature um, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You can't take one of those things out of the equation. He's not just God because he walked amongst us as Jesus Christ. And, and, and sent, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to comfort us, to advise us, to remind us to do all those things, to encourage us. There is a, a, a piece of art that, that I have in my mind. It's an icon of, uh, it's called the Hospitality of Abraham. And if you, if you go online, look, look it up, because it's, it's a very important icon, a very important piece of Christian art. And, and it, it's about um, that, uh, the telling of, of Abraham receiving three divine visitors in the desert. He's got his tent set up in the desert, he's wandering through the wilderness, and these three angels appear to him. And as any good dweller in the desert would do, he offers them hospitality, it's the law of the desert. Somebody shows up at your tent, you offer them hospitality. So he offers these three beings hospitality. And in receiving uh, Abram's generousness, they, uh, they reveal to Abram that he is going to be the father of many nations. He says that Sarai, his wife, is going to conceive a bear and bear a child. And they're old. Older than the dirt. They're well beyond childbearing years. And, and Sarah laughs at this. But the three visitors tell them this, and, and that is, of course, what happens. The picture of, of the hospitality of Abraham uh, shows the three angelic visitors seated around the table. And they are interpreted by Christians to be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they're not three separate entities. They're not closed off to one another. You, you can't take one of them out of the picture and have the rest of it make any sense. Because they are gesturing towards one another. They are pointing to one another or looking at one another. They are a community. And that's in the nature of God. We look to God and we find reflected in God's presence, in God's activity, in his power, we see reflected the idea of community, of communion, of people communing with one another, of people uh, sharing their lives with one another. It's a diverse community. Uh, it, it includes, it's, it's inclusive. It invites, it invites us into this icon. The way it's, it's set up, uh, there's a, an open space at the end of the table for us to participate. And so we too are invited into this community this communion with God. It's about hope. It's about knowing that there is something vast and mysterious about the nature of God that is so infinitely bigger than us that it is something that, that can give us hope. And we see all kinds of things around us, and, and 
institutions of one kind or another, the, the church itself, and maybe once upon a time, these institutions gave people hope. Now we just see all the cracks in the foundations of these institutions. There's very little that you can see or experience in life, in the world, that can give us hope. We need something beyond the world. We need something beyond our limited experience. Those are the things that give us hope. My son-in-law's mother passed away last week. And one of the things that gave them hope was the idea that she was with God. She'd been reunited with all those that she loved and lost. She was, uh, she was with God in, in a way that we cannot be because we live in the world. And that gave them hope. Gave them hope that someday they would be reunited with her. It gave them hope because she was out of suffering. It gave them hope because it was something bigger than, than their own experience of life and death. We're moving into a season in the church year, the Sundays after Trinity. And uh, You'll see next week the hangings will be green. Green is a sign of growth. And that's what the season of Trinity is about. It's about our growth in God. It's about understanding the hope that is within us and seeing that the hope that is within us comes from God. It's a season of growth in learning how to be disciples of Jesus Christ. It's a season of growth in our learning how to respond to the promptings of Holy Spirit. It's a time in the church year when all the importance, all the, all the, what we need to understand about Easter, is, is spun out in our daily lives. So pay attention. <laughs> it's a long season and there's a lot of information, but all of it bends towards that, our growing in Christ, our understanding, this hope that is within us, and grabbing onto that hope when we are hopeful people, we are better at being a community. When we are a hopeful people, we are better able to receive the love that God gives to us. May you be blessed as, as you wrestle with, with this notion of, of Holy Trinity, as you wrestle with this understanding of God's purposes in your life. As you wrestle with the, with the discipline that Jesus calls us to follow as we walk in the way. Bless us. When I had student interns, I would make them preach on the Sunday of the Holy Trinity. Let us continue as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess the faith of our baptism, as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge us living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Prayers of the People uh, will be lifting number three on page 112. Before we ask, 
grant our request that may be best for us, which we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Continuing on page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Almighty God, we confess the sin against you, and God's burden. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another in the name of the Lord.
receive all we offer you in this day. Grant that hearing your word and responding to your spirit, we may share in your divine life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer number 3 on page 198.
unite to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable to him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Let us pray as our Savior is high.
eternal God. May we who have received this Eucharist worship you in all we do and proclaim the glory of your majesty. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. And we pray glory to God, whose God is working in us in a living to be more than we can ask for a Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all of our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son of Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those that you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our recessional. Oh, before I announce the recessional hymn, a reminder that uh, there's refreshments. So please do stay and uh, have some fun and fellowship with us. And there will be a sign up list out there for anybody who would like to uh, provide future lunch. Okay? So let us sing our recessional hymn, God, who's all the mighty words of the five to six.